Hello Ducks fans in Orange County, California, the United States, worldwide. Hope you guys are doing well. Staying safe, staying healthy, and keeping you guys kept this company through social media like as I'm doing right now and through all the restrictions that have been put in place. This video is about our uh, Anaheim Ducks prospects that are migrating to Europe as we speak. Well, not all of them, but at least a total of at least six of them has been loaned to Europe as we speak. Uh, most recently, the Ducks have loaned uh, Jakob uh, Larsen, defenseman that was drafted by the Ducks in the first round, uh, to Sweden, to a Swedish hockey team. I, I will not pronounce the team's name. It's difficult to, to, to speak on that. But he was he is now the sixth uh, Ducks prospect to be loaned to a European club, along with others such as defenseman Hunter Drew, Axel Anderson, goalies Roman Dury, Lucas Dolstal, and uh, center Isaac Lundstrom. Now the reason I'm um, I'm bringing up these names is because of uh, two things. One, the uh, Lack or not the lack of it, but the uh, the no the there's no training camp uh, like yet like last month which should have have, have happened um, no training camp it's a big huge void the Ducks are dealing with as well as the 30 other NHL teams uh, two would be the 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 delay of the Ducks 28th season and the 2020-2021 NHL season which I've mentioned in my previous video about what it may look like if you want to look at and check it out uh, click on one of my videos uh, Ducks Vlog 13 which would describe in my own opinion what the Ducks uh, 20th season will look like anyways we have at least six prospects in Europe uh, and with every any day every week going by our ducks need to basically get our prospects like um, a chance to play some minutes and some time to be on the ice to hone their skills and develop their talents I mean let's be honest I mean right now the ducks would have been playing this month. It will be the beginning of a season, but with no hockey in October and with most of the leagues and the junior leagues in North America have been either delayed or postponed for, for the next few months, you have a lot of prospects and a lot of players who are biting at the chance to hone their skills and to uh, sharpen their hockey IQs. I mean, just like right now, just right now, the Ducks sent, as I say again, Jacob Larson to Europe, to to Sweden, to ensure that his hockey IQ and hockey sense is not on the decline. I mean, the key is, and as, as I say, it's in my honest opinion, is that you have an abundance of prospects just doing the best they can to uh, train, to practice their slap shots, wrist shots, their skating, all that jazz, you know. What to ensure that their, that their game is not on getting a little rusted in a way. Because when you are not playing and since March, it's a long, unusual, crazy, well, not crazy, it's basically an, un an unpredictable off season. Okay, when you are not playing in October, and in September, we're not in training camp, which the Ducks and the other 30 NHL teams would have been. You're, it, it will basically shake up and upend the routine that many of these players, especially our prospects, our Ducks prospects, would have been doing right now. I mean, as we speak right now, we, the Ducks have six, as I say. Uh, I mean, it's it's really the, the importance is to 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 ensure that they avoid um, not having uh, rink rust, basically not having their 
being too complacent in their training, but also to ensure that giving these guys a chance to work on their game for the Ducks to loan them is to ensure that it is a short-term temporary uh, development that, can, that must not be hindered by the pandemic and the unpredictability that's been going on for many of us. I mean, for, for myself, my life has, has been uh, turned upside down. I'm not going to get into detail because that's my personal life. For our team, uh, the Ducks have 21 prospects. 21 prospects uh, under the age of 25. Now, why I bring this up is because, you know, you every day, every week, and probably in, in the next month or two, we will be probably, and I will not be surprised if our Ducks will be loaning more players to Europe to ensure that the, the development is not hindered by the uh, restrictions. I mean, you, I mean, you look at guys like Troy Terry. I won't be surprised he'll be sent over into Europe. Uh, Maxine Quantois, Anton Moran, uh, Benoit Olivier Grew. I won't be surprised if he'll be sent over too. I mean, when you have 21 prospects under the age of 25, uh, most of them were drafted one, two, three years ago. If I was a GM of the Ducks, I would basically do whatever I can to ensure and call every European club and say, hey, uh, we got four or five guys like waiting in wings, chomping at a bit, doing everything they can. I would I would basically, personally ask these European clubs, just, just take this guy in. Just help with their game. Ensure that they don't get any of that uh, rink rust going on because either way, Whenever the NHL season uh, starts, you're going to have a longer training camp, which the Ducks do need, as well as the six other teams that didn't make the uh, Stanley Cup tournament, because they need to get themselves back into in sync with the uh, training camp, but also with the schedule, which they, the majority, all of them, are used to. And with that, they, they need to ensure some sort of normalcy and that in my honest opinion is very much needed for this team and uh, because when you have 21 prospects just doing everything they can to keep things the same keep things normal with in these uncertain times there is much there, there is so much they can do by themselves I mean even Jamie Drysdale was drafted by the Ducks about like a few days ago, or not a few days, like a week or two ago. He turned his own living room with his family into, into his own like mini gym to ensure that his fitness, his routine is not broken up. I mean, it's a long off season, very long for many of us. I mean, the Ducks haven't played since March, and you got March, April, May, June, July, August, September, that's like, oh, geez, that's like seven and a half months, probably going on eight, and probably going on nine. I, am, I, I really feel, in my own personal opinion, that this is done to ensure that for our team, for our prospects to basically get the ice time and, and the minutes they need, it has to be done through be alone. And the Ducks are doing this. They have sent already sent six players. I won't be surprised if they send at least, say, a few more players, a few more players coming, going off to Europe because, you know, the queue is a little bit in, in flux with the uh, outbreak going on in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. I mean, Halifax is still playing, but then again, they're in their own regional bubble. OHL and the Western Hockey League are delaying their season schedule, so the questions on whether or not they're going to start affects the, the, the development of uh, Drysdale and Perot. Both of them are in the OHL. Uh, as
that's for Brandon Tracy. He's in the he's in the WHL, so the Ducks are probably going to look at all three, keep an eye on all of those three prospects. Demon Nickel, hopefully he does what he can to ensure that his skills are not basically on the decline. Because if you're having, if you're if you're not playing for that long time and you're doing the but all that you can to ensure your hockey IQ is up, uh, you're, you don't get any rink rust. It's always best to. Make sure and keep an eye. The Ducks the prospects are not like how would I put it this way? On decline, basically not being falling to complacency, and that is what the, the, this team is doing. And I'm sure that all the, the NHL teams are doing the same thing, as well as the AHL teams and the ECHL teams too. Uh, so, all I can say is that, all I can tell you is that if the training camp started in September, we would have seen the Ducks send most of their, their prospects in the junior leagues up in Canada and in Europe, mainly Finland, Sweden, uh, some of the stronger European leagues. Why not? Stronger or European leagues, excuse me, some of the European leagues that are known to develop prospects in the Ducks system to ensure that they get the, 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 their skills be honed before they are brought over to North America. How long it will go, I don't know, but as each day goes, each week goes, it will, I won't be surprised if we see. The number of Ducks prospect go from 6 to probably 9, 10, even 21. I mean, hey, in these uncertain times, anything can happen. But the one thing is certain is that with no hockey in October, NHL hockey in October, and no hockey, AHL hockey, no ECHL hockey, I mean, the Ducks... That I've prospects and that I've made a list of the names, and you guys know who I'm talking about. Of uh, prospects that should have been in the AHL, that should have been in the ECHL with the new affiliate in Tulsa. The Ducks will be seeing a lot of players, and you'll be seeing, and you'll be reading a lot of Duck prospects migrating to Europe in a short term way to help with the development so what can you do what can you do I mean you can't like wait until the season begins I mean who knows hey, I know I have a feeling on January 1st I mean come on <laughs> we're all gonna be in hangover man but all in all I mean you're gonna see this, like, keep on, keep on coming. And, like, you'll be seeing a lot of loans, a lot, a lot of ducks will be loaning a lot of their prospects to the European clubs. So, another thing I need to uh, want to cover is the uh, rumors of the ducks. Uh, the ducks will be having a, a third jersey. It will be the. It will be the. It's 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 rumored it's long rumored that the Ducks third jersey will be an old will be a retro alternate jersey. It will be kind of like a throwback, a throwback to the first third jersey, alternate jersey in the Ducks history. Most of you know about the Baldwin jersey, the one that where Baldwin was coming out, breaking out of the ice. Now, apparently, Icelandics. Isletics website in uh, online. If you type in uh, Isletics, it published an article on October 21st, 2020, on rumors that the Ducks will be unveiling a retro jersey. Whether the date, what the date will be, who knows? But it, it showed a Photoshop picture of uh, the Ducks Wild Winger uh, jersey in an orange, orange color. So. Say if this is true, and say if the Ducks do make it official that uh, 
they have a new old today jersey, a retro one. Uh, we should not be embarrassed by it. We should embrace it. We embrace it because it's part of the team's heritage. And it's part of our, 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 our Ducks' unique history and past. I mean, I remember when I first saw that uh, ball winner alternate uh, jersey, I was pretty uh, intrigued by it. I was interested in it. I didn't see it as an ugly. I saw it as something that uh, very creative, very different. Uh, back then, when uh, most of the hockey jerseys were kind of a little, a little bland, a little ugly, but hey, to each your own. That's how it is. So, if this is true, then this would have been be the Ducks' sixth ultimate third jersey in their history. So, I mean, I wonder about that, but whatever it looks like, whatever it will be, I fully support that. I fully support whatever the design will be because, to be honest with you, I really do like that jersey. I really do like that uh, Wild Winter Ultimate uniform. It gives you, it gives that unique, uh, distinct look to the the um, the history of the team. So, who knows what would happen? But that's all I have to say. Till then, I'll see you guys soon.